Greetings, listeners, and thanks for tuning in to In the Know with the Bullioness. I'm Dawn Marie, the Bullioness, a Silver Level Associate and Top Producing Sponsor at 7K Metals. Tonight, we have a very special guest that I am so honored to have on the show, and I know you will relish in everything he has to share. Our special guest tonight is Mr. Michael Miles Standish, Vice President of NGC. But before we go into that, I want you to understand a little bit about where he's come from and what makes him tick. Miles is currently the Vice President of NGC. He's a world-class coin expert, a world-class sports authenticator, two-time best-selling author, rare collectibles TV expert, and philanthropist. He is also the founder of Collector's Universe. But for you to fully understand his background, let's take you back to where it all started. Born in Kalamazoo, Michigan, the salary capital of the world on November 13, 1964, Miles became interested in numismatics at a young age. He went to high school in Portage, Michigan, where he lettered in football and was a disc jockey of the school radio station. Miles first became involved in selling coins at the age of 17 when he set up his first table at the 1982 National Silver Dollar Show in Houston, Texas. Miles began his career in the coin industry as he traveled to regional and local coin shows. He was hired by ANACS, America's oldest grading service, to be a grader in 1984. Then, in 1987, Miles joined PCGS as their first full-time coin grader in the company's history. And over time, he became part owner in that company. Miles received notoriety for the detection of an imposter coin. Someone had taken a 1945 cent, which back then was made of copper alloy, and altered the five in the date to resemble a three. However, expert authenticator Miles needed only seconds to spot the alteration and pass the news along to the coin's now crestfallen owner. Instead of it being rare and worth a small fortune, unfortunately, the coin was just an ordinary coin. And then in 2015, Miles joined Numismatic Guarantee Corporation and now serves as vice president. Miles is one of American numismatics most recognized graders and authenticators of coins. While with PCGS, Miles developed a number of marketing innovations, including PCGS's first strike programs, the company's signature series, which includes autographs of notable figures. Such notable figures as Presidents George H. Bush and Gerald Ford and Hall of Fame baseball player Nolan Ryan. Miles was awarded the Director's Coin of Excellence by Director of the United States Mint, Edmund Moy. Other notable accomplishments include creation of the first encapsulated holder housing a U.S. coin and a U.S. presidential autograph. Miles authenticated a number of high-profile sports items, including Mark McGuire's 70th home run ball and Henry Aaron's 715th home run bat In 2014, ball. Miles merged his passion for sports and numismatics by offering a series of limited-edition PCGS-graded coin inserts featuring the signatures of members of the National Baseball Hall of Fame. Miles has also authored two books, The Morgan Dollar, America's Love Affair with the Legendary Coin, and America's Silver Eagles, A Guide to the U.S. Bullion Coin Program. Wow, now that was an impressive bio. Without further ado, let's get our special guest on the show. Welcome to the show, Miles. How are you doing? Thank you, Don. I'm doing fantastic. It's nice to be here. Miles, it is an honor to have you on the show. I got to ask, though, looking back at your vast career, is it all kind of surreal to you from where you've been to where you are now? Well, I think the, uh, the time has flown by. That's probably the biggest shock to me. Um, <laughs> from, from when I really full-time started grading coins professionally in 1984, it just seems to be, uh, uh, to me, like yesterday. Um, I think the things that I've, that, I've, that I've tried to do and have accomplished since then, um, you know, it's been a well, well planned out plan of things that I wanted to do. And, uh, you know, with a few, uh, you know, a few well wishes and, uh, and hope and prayers, things have come together and uh, come together over that period of time in a good way. 
Excellent. So your name is Michael Standish, but your nickname is Miles. Can you tell us a little bit about how you got that nickname and who gave it to you? Well, that was back in the early 80s, obviously with a name like Standish, and which is tied to the Pilgrims' first landing at Plymouth Rock. Um, the military captain who protected the Indians, excuse me, protected the Pilgrims uh, from potential uh, Indians when they landed at Plymouth Rock, uh, Miles Standish was the military captain. Um, that nickname was given to me in the, in the mid-80s by the then president of the American Numismatic Association, uh, a friend of mine by the name of Florence Shook, who was a uh, young numismatist uh, uh, person that uh, helped young numismatists in my field. And uh, she was also a fellow Michigander like myself. And when I went to work at the ANA in 1984, uh, she kind of told everybody that my name was Miles. And quite honestly, it stuck. And uh, <laughs> it, it's been that ever since. And is there a special anniversary coming up? Well, actually, uh, next year will be the 400th anniversary of the Pilgrims landing at Plymouth Rock. And uh, the U.S. Mint will commemorate that with a uh, Pilgrim 400th anniversary landing uh, commemorative coin. Oh, so exciting. Well, one of the reasons I had have Miles on the show today is because I am a 7K Medals member, and he is the vice president of NGC. I had the opportunity to meet Miles in New York in September and was so thoroughly impressed bought his book, got some great pictures with him, and uh, he is doing an exclusive design. We'll talk a little later about this, but he is a rock star and celebrity in the world of 7K medals, and we are so over the moon. Um, we have a private label with NGC right now going on with our, our Silver Eagle State Series. And I have to ask, Miles, you just recently met us all in New York in September. What do you think of the people of 7K? I actually uh, put 7K medals in the group uh, kind of on, on its own as the most exciting group of people with more enthusiasm than I've seen in probably at least 30 years or more of people wow. that are excited about coins, gold and silver coins and collecting of them. I have never seen, and I have to say this too, as I said those words, I've never seen so many friendly people that have so much passion for coins as I've seen among 7K members. <laughs> well, we definitely love 7K World and 7K people. They're just amazing. All entrepreneurial spirits from all different walks of life just coming together with a shared vision that everybody should have some collectibles and some gold and silver in their hands. And how many coins have you created over the years? In the, in the process of, of working in the grading room, which is over 30 years, I've graded over 10 million coins. Um, you know, those are, uh, uh, as I always say, yeah, that's 10 million coins looking at both sides. Wow, that's incredible. And how, how much time does it take approximately for each coin? I mean, you're probably so good at it now. Does it just take seconds? Does it take minutes? Well, you know, I was always blessed with uh, 2010 vision, so I never had any type of uh, huge need for any mechanical help, even high-powered magnification. You know, the, you know, you never really, when you're grading a coin, you never need more than five power magnification to accurately grade it. Uh, you might use a little bit more higher power to authenticate it, but for grading, nothing more than a five power, and for myself, you know, I didn't have to always take the time to go back and forth with a low power magnification to determine the grade of a coin. So probably made me one of the world's fastest coin graders uh, that's ever worked in a grading room just because of either my confidence level in grading and ability to see, see the coin clearly uh, with the naked eye. Yeah, you're just a natural at it, like a master. <laughs> so... What are some of the high-value coins that you have graded in your career? Well, I believe I've graded just about every coin that's ever sold for a million dollars or more. Probably the most expensive coin that I graded 
uh, was the 1794 dollar, which is the finest known 1794 dollar um, that sold for 10 million dollars. That coin's history, uh, uh, the way the story goes, and I say that as a story because I can't con- confirm it to be 100 percent true, but it, but that coin was specifically um, struck from silver that uh, Martha Washington um, provided to her husband George to use at the U.S. Mint to make that silver dollar. Um, I don't know if it was a, uh, you know, part of a tea set or, you know, a, a comb or a brush set, but her own, it's believed that some of her own silver that was used to make that coin is in that particular coin, um, but it is the finest known of, of that particular date and it sold for $10 million at auction. Um, but a lot of the coins, like I said, a lot of the coins that have sold for, you know, 250000 500000 or a $1 million, I've had the opportunity to grade. Just incredible. I mean, the value alone is amazing, just kind of mind-blowing, but also just realizing that... You are that part of history. That's very cool. And what is your personal favorite of coins? You know, my personal favorite, um, I actually have two um, because I have uh, obviously uh, written both subjects of, of books on them. Uh, one is Morgan Dollars, uh, you know, struck from 1878 to 1904 and again in 1921. And then the other being the American Silver Eagle, which has uh, been a program that I've been extremely interested in since they came out in 1986. Incredible. And, uh, this, and that series, of course, which has uh, gained momentum of interest, uh, has been one of the most popular uh, series to collect, um, you know, in the last 30 years of U.S. Uh, coin collectors. As there's a resurgence in coin collecting, 7K Metals is becoming a household name. How do you see the market for certified coins growing? Well, I, I see that, uh, you know, the growth in certified coins to continue to grow as the expansion of awareness to collecting gold and silver and coins grows. Um, obviously, between uh, uh, the Internet, television, and other marketing mediums, uh, you know, it's, it's going to continue to grow world, worldly, or I should say globally, and um you know, I know that with us, we have uh, at NGC, you know, we're expanding with uh, offices around the globe for certifying coins in foreign countries, uh, both in Europe and Asia. Uh, just to name a, just to name a couple, are areas that we're doing quite a bit of uh, certification work, and I believe those populations are still yet untapped. And you know, you got to remember, certification, you know, certification really started in the late seventies. Uh, the encapsulation of an individual coin in a sonically sealed or uh, tamper-evident holder, like an NGC holder, has really only been going on since about 1986. Um, and that's primarily been and only in this country. So if you use the American population of 350 million, that population is still getting exposed, and not everyone, of course, in our country even knows about it. Um, and then we still haven't tapped into that Europe, that European population that uh, doesn't know about certification of coins and and the the insurance that a certified coin in a protective holder creates for them. And then I said, as I said, you know, with with, with offices in all over Asia, um, that's an entire population of billions of people between Asia and Europe that haven't even been exposed to certification. So I believe uh, in, in many lifetimes there's still a lot of expansion for certified coins and the popularity of it. I'm excited about this brand new design of yours, your very first one, exclusive to 7K Metals, Miss 2020 Liberty. What can you tell us about it? Well, I can tell you, you know, um, like many things that I've done in my history in, in, in coins, you know, one idea has turned into multiple ideas or even a better idea. And, um, you know, with actually these two different designs of coins coming out, uh, you know, two or one coin became two coins. And, you know, as, as you know, both these coins are limited edition. 
original design, the original concept in my mind was to design a silver coin with the Statue of Liberty. Um, it had been, you know, that design is not a new design to, to see the full frontal view of the Statue of Liberty. But you know, what I wanted to do was create a coin where you looked at the front of the coin and you saw you know, that full design of Miss Liberty. And then when you flipped it over, you'd see the backside as it would appear. And that is really genuinely my idea that I came up with several years ago. And of course, you know, we're, it's coming to market now um, after the planning and, and, the, and the design work is done. And it's coming in a one ounce silver and a two ounce coin. Where so the two ounce it's, coin has that close up where it's kind of the, kind of a, uh, you know, kind of the, the, the mid height of Miss Liberty to the top of her head and in the back the same way. Um, and of course, like I said, that became one idea, became a two idea uh, production. And, uh, you know, I've, I've, I've already seen the first two coins that were struck. I've seen them as, uh, uh, as the, the samples that were showed to me, and they were absolutely stunning. Um, I was telling uh, someone just the other day that I think that uh, uh, it'll be a case where, you know, people will get them in their hands. I don't think they're going to be disappointed at all. I know that I can probably be the biased person here to say that, but, uh, you know, ultimately it's how the coin is struck and how it's turned out, and that's the job of the Mint with CIT Mint, and they turned out fabulous. Um, and uh, you're going to wish you bought more, I believe. And I, that's that's not a sales pitch; that's a reality. I just think that uh, I think the popularity is going to be extremely strong, uh, but I think there'll be uh, you know a lot of uh, global interest for people that want to get a hold of those two coins. And, They're uh, just breathtaking. So, do you have future design planned? Well, let's just say this: I've got a, uh, uh, I've always got a lot of ideas in my mind, and uh, I've got, I've got, uh, I've got some ideas that I want to do that haven't been done. And the only thing I, I truly want to do, and I hope all listeners hear this, and they can, they can hold me to it. Um, the future of coin designs that I am going to produce, it's going to be designs that have not been done. I don't want to do something that's been repeated. I, uh, I want to come up with things that people said, huh, that's different. I like that. And I think that, uh, yeah, I would like that to be my legacy and everything that I did that, uh, you know, uh, a lot like someone that once told me that, uh, you know, a lot of people come up with ideas and the person was referring to me, and they said, but the difference with you, Miles, is you, you come up with ideas, but you take it to the hoop. And that will always be my goal with coin designs. That, uh, you know, I can come up with a lot of ideas, but I want to come up with ideas that people will say, yeah, that, he, he brought it out, but he brought it out different, and nobody ever thought about it that way. And so I guess that's probably what I'd want to be known for in my legacy of uh, coin designs or ideas. Oh, that's beautiful because that's so tr so important to just, you know, through completion. So many people have great ideas, but none of us get to appreciate them if they're not done. So, Miles, looking back at your vast career, who would you say gave you your biggest break? You know, I have to tell you, um, I have had a lot of breaks, and, and I can say that I never had anything handed to me. I believe I've earned everything I've ever uh, obtained. Um, I don't think I ever got any, uh, you know, like uh, you know, nobody ever gave me the winning lottery ticket. Okay, I think I earned every. I think I earned every winning lottery ticket. But uh, you know, I think I've had a lot of good kindness along the way that um, people have extended to me that probably got me to the next uh, to the next hillside. You know, I always I always refer to uh, you know when I created the idea of uh, hand signed autographs included with coins, I always say, you know, I got to tell you, you know, President Ford, uh, you know, when I did an autograph signing with him, he gave me a, he gave me a heck of a break. And that is, you know, I treated him with uh, kindness and respect and showed up for our meetings on several occasions in a timely manner and conducted myself uh, professional with him. And, you know, when it came time to wanting to expand that autograph program to more presidents, you know, he simply, uh, you know, he simply made a phone call to uh, 41, which was obviously H.W. Bush, and, you know, just suggested to him that uh, I'd be a fine guy to work with on a, an autograph coin program. So I kind of 
I consider breaks like that to be huge to me. Um, didn't take much for him to do that, but sure, sure meant the world to me. And uh, obviously, uh, you know, today, uh, you know, at NGC, uh, you know, that's a big focal point of our business uh, uh, with coins and coins and hand signed autographs with coins. In some cases, uh, has been uh, you know a focal point in the marketplace and the growth. So I can say that's one of my breaks. But uh, you know, I've had several just as simple as that. You know? So I believe you were about 35 when you met President Ford. How was that? Were you really nervous? You know, um, he was another Michigander like myself. He played football at the University of Michigan. And, uh, you know, he always had a nickname for me when I'd show up at either in Colorado or in Palm Desert. Uh, you know, Kalamazoo, Michigan, where I grew up, was once known as the celery capital of the world. And he always called me the celery kid. Um <laughs> So we always had this kind of kinship because of that. Um, he was in his uh, late 80s uh, when we first met, um, and we worked together for a couple of years at, uh, from then on. Um, but, uh, you know, probably one of the, um, you know, the things about him is that he was real, and that is, you know, we talked about uh, the gamut. I remember him looking at me one day, and he says, you know, you can ask me any question you want. And, of course, uh, you know, I think about that today. There's so many more things that I would have asked him than I did. But, uh, you know, that's pretty. That's a pretty comfortable thing to hear from someone. You know, ask me anything you want. And, of course, we, you know, we had a lot of fabulous conversations. Too. How many presidents have you worked with? Well, uh, well, that, well, that was actually a coin and autograph program. Um, it was for White House dollars back uh, that were struck in the 90s um, by the U.S. Mint. But, uh, you know, I've worked with two Two presidents, Ford, Ford and H. Uh, w. Bush, uh, President Forty One. Um, those are the two. Over the years, you have done so many projects with celebrities. Any stories you want to tell us? Well, you know, I mean, I've you know, I've done autographs with you know war heroes and generals and fifty major league baseball Hall of Famers. Um, you know, I, I have to tell you. It's a wide, it's a wide range of people. Um, you know, this year, of course, is the 50th anniversary of uh, walking on the moon, um, and I've been working with uh, Charlie Duke, who was on Apollo 16. Uh, he was the 10th man ever to walk on the moon, and the beautiful thing is that Charlie happens to be a neighbor of mine in Austin, Texas, wow. just, just outside of nice. Austin. Nice. And uh, you know, I, I, you know, the thing is that people don't realize. Uh, you know, when you get to meet a moonwalker, you know, there's just things that very few people have ever been able to do. And, uh, you know, and, and the cute thing about Charlie is that uh, he, was the, he was the first, uh, he was the first moonwalker to take country music to the moon. And, uh, <laughs> it, and if you have a chance, you might want to YouTube that and look for Charlie. Charlie Duke took country music to the moon, and uh, he has a neighbor that wrote a song and, uh, yeah, and created that music, and it's quite fabulous. But uh, no, uh, that's been Charlie Duke's a fine man, and he's been a lot of fun to work with too. But I've got, I've got, you know, I've got endless stories of, of these people that I've worked with over the years, and uh, usually, I I've pursued them. They don't, uh, they don't usually come looking for me, but I've always gone looking for them, and I've found some great ones. And uh, you know, it's been great to get it accepted that people would match up coins with. Uh, famous people or celebrities in the world uh, and and it's worked but I'm not done uh, there's a you know I still have uh, I'm gonna live past a hundred so uh, you know I've still got another at least 50 years to uh, accomplish a whole lot more so yeah, you're uh, just I, in your you know, prime time you are good there you go absolutely Besides grading, growing the coin collecting industry authoring two best-selling books doing TV appearances and creating Fabulous coin designs. What's next? You know, that's uh, that's that's a good question, and believe me, uh, the the only way for me to figure out what's next is I challenge myself daily, and those are probably uh, you know those are uh, those are good words to pass on to anyone in any kind of profession. But uh, I I challenge my myself daily on okay, and I, and and don't take this wrong, but uh, you know. I'll, there's certain times where I say, okay, I got to come up with a great idea that nobody's thought of. And that's usually those words are 
my best challenge for me to coming up. And, uh, you know, there's some things that we'll announce in 2020 from NGC that have been just that, that haven't happened yet and haven't been rolled out yet. But uh, there's a lot more to come, and 2020 will reveal some of those things that uh, simply I challenged myself. Uh, you know, nobody else is going to do it for you. Nobody's going to get under your skin. Nobody's going to really push you. You've got to push yourself. And uh, I tend to push myself for, you know, the ideas that I've come up with in the last 30-plus years in the coin industry. Um, but I always challenge myself. And I'm a good listener to others. You know, I always say, you know, my best ideas are things I came up with, but maybe – uh, I would say that most of them it's just because I, I listened to others and found out what was important to them. And th that's how I've developed some of my greatest ideas. Well, that is key, being a good listener and hearing the need out there. And as we usher in 2020, a whole new decade is upon us. And may you be a role model on how you can be just at the right place at just the right time and be an achy something and just everything just come together with hard work and dedication going through completion. It wasn't like you said, no one gave it to you. So I don't want to imply that. But I would love to extend to you an open invitation anytime you want to come back on the show and tell us a little bit more about what you're working on. You are always welcome. Would that be okay? Thank you. I'd love it. Okay, good. So as we wrap up today's segment, if you're finding value from our shows, do subscribe to our channel. Click the little bell next to the subscription button to be notified of segments as soon as they're uploaded. And most importantly, do share these segments on your social media channels as our mission is to get this timely and pertinent information out to everybody that needs to know this worldwide. And with that, we need your assistance to do it. So you're important to this process. Thank you again, Miles, for blessing us with this special interview today. And I'm so sure that the listeners, especially those that are 7K Metal members, have taken away so much value and wisdom from this information. And I know they're going to be excited about the infinite possibilities our future holds as you partner with us and that teaches, uh, leads us into household name status. So until our next segment, everyone, thank you for listening, and we will be back soon.